Good morning, scholars. Today is Friday, so we have made it almost to the weekend. All you got are the videos um, and our small groups left, and then it's the weekend. So um, <clears throat> during this unit, we have been working on um, learning about presidents. Uh, we have learned about George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, uh, and the most current president uh, that's in this book, President Barack Obama, who was our 44th president. Uh, then it went Donald Trump, and now it's Joe Biden. So just a little bit more um, information for you. Today we are going to actually read about a place called Mount Rushmore, all right? And this right here is Mount Rushmore. Today, I am going to tell you a story about a wonderful monument. Remember, a monument is like a statue or something uh, to represent something. This is a special monument of four of the presidents you have been learning about. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. This Mount Rushmore, let's name the four people shown as we just did. So... George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, or Teddy Roosevelt, uh, and Abraham Lincoln. This monument is carved or cut out of rock on Mount Rushmore in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So South Dakota is one of our 50 states. Boom! Everyone near the mountain was covering their ears, but still heard the thunderous explosion, followed by loud crashes. Boom! It happened again. Gutson Borglum was blowing up a mountain. Gutson Borglum was a well-known American sculptor. A sculptor is someone who creates a work of art by carving or molding clay or stone. So sometimes... Almost like if you're working, if you're playing with Play-Doh and you like cut stuff out of it and things and make something out of it, that's kind of what a sculptor is. He created many statues of important people in history. One of his statues of Abraham Lincoln is on display inside the U.S. Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Guts and Borgloom usually used a hammer and chisels with sharp points to make sculptures out of rock. But this statue was different. This time, Gutzen Borglum was using dynamite to blow away huge pieces of rock from the side of a gigantic mountain. It all began with a man who had a big idea, a very big idea. Dwayne Robinson loved his home state of South Dakota, he loved hearing stories about South Dakota from long ago. He loved South Dakota so much that he wanted people from all over America to visit and learn about his home state. I know a way to get people to come to the South Dakota, <clears throat> thought Robinson. People will come to see a giant statue carved into the side of our big mountains. Robinson thought the sculpture should feature well-known people from South Dakota's past, maybe a Native American chief or a hero from the Wild West, or perhaps, perhaps explorers like Lewis and Clark. He wasn't quite sure who the statue should feature, but he knew one thing. It would have to be so big that people could see it from miles away. Robinson knew that he would need to get permission to build such an enormous statue. He would also need money to pay for the project and a sculptor to, des to design it. The first person Robinson talked to was the United States Senator from South Dakota. So this is a senator and that's uh, Mr. Robinson. The senator thought it was a wonderful idea. I will help get the United States government to agree with your plan, the senator told Robinson. I will also ask my friend in South Dakota government for their support, too. Not everyone thought the idea to carve 
A giant statue in the mountains of South Dakota was a good one. For many, many years, various Native American tribes, tribes lived on the land around Mount Rushmore. Many Native Americans, including the Lakato Seo, believed the area of the Black Hills where Mount Rushmore was to be carved was sacred and holy land. They did not think it was right that their sacred land was first taken away from them years earlier, and now they did not believe that a statue should be carved into the mountains. Despite the Native Americans' objections, Robinson and the senators moved forward with their plan to find a sculptor. So basically, uh, that means that the Native Americans did not want them to carve into the mountains, but they did it anyway. Kind of not the greatest. They found the perfect man for the job, Gutson Borglum. Gutson Borglum came to South Dakota to see the mountains for himself. He liked the idea of carving a huge statue into the Black Hills, but he believed his project should be even bigger than Robinson and the Senator first imagined. To attract people from all over America, said the sculptor, we should, we should carve statues of people who are familiar across the country, not just well known in South Dakota. Robinson and the senator liked Borglum's idea. It was Borglum who suggested four presidents, who he felt symbolized the first 150 years of America. President Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Roosevelt. President George Washington was our first president. Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence. President Lincoln was the president during the Civil War. And President Roosevelt, a personal favorite of Borglum and Robinson's, worked for nature conservation. With the other's support, Guts and Borglum began to search the Black Hills for the right spot to carve his mountain. No, he thought, the rock in this one is not the right kind for carving. It will crumble and fall apart. <clears throat> that mountain has the right kind of rock, but it cannot be seen well from a distance. Finally, Borglum announced, we shall carve Mount Rushmore, Amer Mount Rushmore. American history will march along the mountaintop. <clears throat> now, the only thing the group needed was money to pay for the project. As luck would have it, Calvin Coolidge, the U.S. president at the time, and his wife came, from, came to South Dakota on vacation. To make sure that President and Miss Coolidge enjoyed their visit, the senator and his friends secretly moved extra fish into the streams outside the Coolidge's vacation cabin. They hoped the president would catch lots of fish and would want to stay in South Dakota longer. It worked. While he was there, Gutson Borglum and uh, Dwayne Robinson went to ask the president to help raise money for their project. President Coolidge liked the idea too. He gave a speech about their plan so people from all across the country would read about it and send money to help. Finally, Gutson Borglum could begin carving the mountainside monument. <clears throat> the carving was too big to create with a hammer and chisel. The way Borglum sculpted other statues. Hammer is right here, and the chisel is right here. So you'd put the chisel on the uh, rock, and then you'd hit it with the hammer. Some chunks of rock he wanted to cut away from the mountains were as big and as heavy as a truck. He would have to blow them away with dynamite. Ooh, fun. <clears throat> Gutson Borglum had about 400 people helping him. Many had worked in mines and knew about cutting rock. People in mines dig into the ground to find coal and minerals. In order to dig through the ground, they needed to cut through rock. Others had used dynamite to blow open holes for mines, but they told Borglum nobody had ever asked us to shape a mountain before. We do not know where to start. <clears throat> Pardon me. The dynamite, so it will explode in the right direction. We don't know how to blow 
up just the right amount of rock, but not too much. Borglum had to figure out how much, how to do that himself and teach his workers. Every step had to be done very carefully. If they cut too much rock away, they could not put it back. After the dynamite did its job, some workers smothered the, smoothed the surface, pardon me, while others cleaned up the rocks and dust left from the explosion. It took more than 14 years to complete the project. From beginning to end, unfortunately, Gutzon Borglum died in March 1941, just six months before the giant faces were done. Thankfully, his sons, Lincoln, who was Borglum's, who had named after the president, was determined to finish what his father had began. He decided not to give up on his work. So being determined is... Uh, pushing harder and harder to get something accomplished. Today, millions of people from all across America and all around the world visit Mount Rushmore every year to see the enormous images of Washington, Jefferson, Roosevelt, and President Lincoln. The carved faces sit 500 feet above the ground and measure 60 feet above, or 60 feet long. So from here to here is 60 feet. That's a really long distance. <clears throat> That's the height of six, a six-story building. From forehead to chin, even, even more amazing, the monument can be seen from 60 miles away. So 60 miles away, you can still see this monument. Dwayne Bor... Uh, Dwayne Robinson had dreamed that people would come. The senator worked tirelessly to make it happen, and Gutzon Borglum and his son, Lincoln Borglum, fought the dream to life. All right, friends, so that's going to be our last video for this unit. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all learned some stuff, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye, friends. <clears throat>